Hi everyone, welcome back to The Homegrown Artist and Happy New Year's. Uh, my name is Barbara and today we're going to be doing a kind of Christmas haul, mostly Thanksgiving from Christmas and I'll explain that in just a minute. But I hope everyone had a ha happy Chris or no, <laughs> a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and just enjoyed the holidays overall. I am back after a, I guess like three weeks or a month break um, for the holidays just because I did a lot of stuff with my kids. Um, for the holidays so I wanted to take a break and have time to do that stuff with them. Uh, I also want to say thank you to everyone for subscribing and uh, entering into the giveaway and that will be um, announced on the 5th which I think is Friday um, who won the giveaway. Uh, so look forward to that and keep sharing with your friends and everything and give them a chance to enter into the giveaway as well. Um, and then another thing I want to say is I am a very impatient person when it comes to art supplies. So when I get them, I want to open them and I want to play with them. So this video is going to be just a little bit weird because uh, you're going to see clips with like me having different clothes on. Like right now I have on a yellow sweater and then a clip later, a few clips later, you're going to see me in the same sweater doing um, the rest of the haul. But I did clips as I was getting things in because I really, really wanted to play with them. Uh, so yeah, and then some of the stuff that I'm going to show you now, I have um, dabbled with just a little bit because like I said, I really am impatient with art supplies. I want to test them out and play with them and do all kinds of things. Uh, some of them I haven't really touched or opened yet because I haven't had the need to yet. Um, a lot of this stuff, I just want to say, I'm, I'm not trying to brag or anything. I'm just trying to do a haul to show you what I got just in case you see something and you're... you're you may be like, ooh, that, that's really cool. I want to try that out. Um, and I got this stuff either, like I said, I get almost all my art supplies for Christmas and birthdays and holidays like that. Um, so for Christmas, I do it big with art supplies. And then I also, I sold my Cricut um, just because I'm, I'm not really into doing that anymore. Um, and they keep making new ones. <laughs> And I keep wanting the new one, which I probably won't get for a few years now. Because, just because, you know, I don't use it anymore. I, I tend to lean more towards, um, like, mediums and stuff like that and painting. So, yeah. Uh, so, some of the stuff I got probably around Thanksgiving or a little bit after Thanksgiving um, from the sale of my Cricut. And then the rest of the stuff I got from family and friends for um, Christmas. And uh, also from a subscriber, I got a few things. And then... Um, just some things that if I had Christmas money, I went out and, and bought myself. So, I'm going to go ahead and get started with the haul and show you what I got. So, all this stuff right here is what I got from selling the Cricut. And it's all from DickBlick.com or Blick.com. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go through that first. And then I'm going to go through some other things that I got for Christmas as well. So, uh, the first two things that I'm pretty excited about... Um, they were only four dollars, or like less than four dollars. I think it was like three seventy something a piece. Are these little Daniel Smith extra fine watercolor learn to paint step by step kits? And they come in two different kinds: spring and floral, um, which are kind of the same in my mind, except for you get like a bird because it's florals and the other ones as well. Um, but it's a really inclusive, like all inclusive set that can teach you how to paint. So it includes, it says set includes everything you need. So you get a DVD that tells you the four painting project and all the instructions and how to do that. Do it. You get 12 try it paint colors, which are there right there, which we'll go over in just a minute. Four watercolor sheets, which I have taken everything out and looked through it. And it's artist quality watercolor sheets, which is really amazing. Um, and then you get one brush, which is not a high quality brush. It's a camel hair brush. Um, it's called a silver camel round, um, and it acts kind of like a squirrel brush, if you can see how when it bends. Um, so it is a natural hairbrush, so, and I have not tried it yet. I, I have rinsed the glue out from the paintbrush, but I'm not sure exactly how great of a watercolor brush it'll be. It doesn't seem to keep a fine point, so we'll see. I'll play around with it and let you know. Um, and it comes with... One palette, the little cheap palettes like this right here, but that's okay. That's all you need whenever you're working with something like this. And then you can keep them for life and use them um, for mixing inks or um, doing calligraphy with or something like that. You can keep using them. Um, so that's pretty awesome. And uh, I'll show you the watercolor paper actually just to show you that it is it's artist quality. Quality, and I know I haven't used them at all, but I just know from the feel of it 
um, and the texture of it. If you can see the texture right there, that's the front of it. It almost feels like either Fabriano Artistico or Fluid um, paper. I'm not sure which one. I think Fluid based on the back, the texture on the back, but I'm not sure. Um, but it's it's not machine made. It's definitely mold made, and it feels like um, like cotton. So I'm not a hundred percent sure that it is artist quality paper from the but from the feel of it and from um, the texture and everything, I'm about eighty percent sure, ninety percent sure that it is artist quality paper. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put that back in here, and then you get four um, transfer images. So of all these little things that you see right here, all these little paintings, you get transfer images so you can trace, you don't have to draw, and uh, a sheet of um, like transfer paper. Um, and then I did want to show you some of the colors that come in there. So the reason that I got this is um, not only because it comes, it, for $4 it's not a bad thing, it teaches you how to paint, maybe I'll learn something new um, from the little DVD and everything. So that that's amazing in itself that it's for four dollars and you you learn how to do four different little paintings but you also get um kind of like the little dot sheets of daniel smith um watercolors and you can cut them off um for each painting that you do so you don't have to carry the sheet around as you go but what i think is interesting about this is the fact that instead of just giving you a dot sheet to kind of swatch out it gives you the dot sheets and the project to do with those colors um so you actually get to try the colors out and see how they work with other colors, which I think is really cool. Um, so some of these colors I may already have, but a lot of them I don't. So like Quinacridone Red, I'll pick it up so you can see. Quinacridone Red is pretty cool. I haven't tried that in Daniel Smith. I do have it in uh, M. Graham, but I, I don't have it in Daniel Smith. Buff Titanium, I've heard wonderful things, and I have swatched it out from the Daniel Smith swatch card, but I didn't paint with it. Um, so... But I think painting with it will give me a better idea of whether or not I want to buy that tube of color. This is like a really awesome kit to not only swatch out the colors, but to use them in a painting and, you, and see how they work together. So I was really excited about this. Um, uh, and at under $4 for each thing, you, I mean, you get your money's worth. I think it was listed as $24, $25. Uh, originally, and then they were on sale for under four dollars each, so that's the reason I got them. I'm pretty excited about them. All right, and then the next thing I got was talk about watercolors, some more M. Graham paints. So over the past year, I've gotten for just randomly when I had money to spend, I got the Jewel Tone set. Um, and then I got, for my birthday, the Quinacridone set. So I had 10 tubes of color to start out with. And then over the years, or over this year, I've been buying more and more tubes. Like every other month, I'd get another tube of M. Graham. Trying to start a collection. And I do paint with them. I squirt them out in, let's see. I'm pretty sure I already showed you this in my uh, room tour, or art space tour video. But I squirt them out in here and play around with them. Um, to get to know the colors and everything, but I haven't set up like a permanent palette for them yet. Um, for Christmas on my list is one of those big flat palettes that have like the plastic lids. Um, so I haven't put them in a per permanent palette because number one, I don't have all the colors that I want yet. So I don't know exactly where I'm going to put them in the palette. And then uh, I still have a few to collect. So this may seem like a lot, a lot of watercolors, which it is. I, you definitely don't need all these colors, but I just... I really, really fell in love with M. Graham Paints when I tried the sets that I originally got, so I want to get um, a lot of their tubes. I'm like addicted to get purchasing their tubes now. Um, but I got um, Ultramarine Blue, Neutral Tint, Transparent Red Iron Oxide. Uh, no, this doesn't belong in here. I didn't just get this. I've already had it. That's one I got like a few months ago, so sorry. Start over. Ultramarine Blue, Neutral Tint, Raw Sienna. Indian Yellow, Azo Green, um, Scar Scarlet Pyrrole, which interestingly, this is, I have swatched it, um, but this is a an orange pigment. It is PO73, um, so it's an airlight type pigment, 
but it, lo it looks very similar to like a cadmium red light or something like that. So I wanted a very orange red to go, go in contrast to all the pinky reds that I have and the colors in between. So I got Scarlet Pyrrole, um, Burnt Umber, Thalo Blue, Green Shade, Azo Yellow, and Thalo Green. Uh, so a lot of the colors that I'm getting are colors that like uh, mm, Steve from Mind of Watercolor, he suggested a few colors that are his favorite in Imgram. So Indian Yellow and Azo Green are two of them. And then I think Neutral Tint is another one of them. Ultramarine Blue was one of them. And then I think um, Prussian Blue, and I have a few others. This color, Transparent Red Iron Oxide, was one of them. So I'm getting the colors that he suggested that he likes as well. But also colors that I would tend to like, like, um, let's see, like Ultramarine Pink and Cobalt Teal. I really love granulating colors, so these are two colors that I bought um, before purchasing these um, that, oh my gosh, I love so much. Um, I can actually show you on this unfinished painting that I messed up, but this is the ultramarine pink right out here, and then some of the cobalt teal, and they go really, really well together. Um, so that's the M-Gram tubes that I got. And then, this is going to be a long video. <laughs> and then from Daniel Smith, I got, I replaced my quinacridone rose, or not replaced, but I just got another, another tube because I ran out of it. I started off with quinacridone rose and the little um, six set of Daniel Smith, the split primary mixing colors, and these little five milliliter tubes last for quite a long time if you don't use that color over and over again, but with quinacridone rose, I did use that color quite a bit. It was one of my main colors that I used, um, so I did have to replace that tube. And then I got Hematite Burnt Scarlet Genuine, which, oh my gosh, I'm really, really excited to use. This color, it's supposed to be really, really gorgeous. I've seen other people use it, and I've just, it's been on my list for a long, long time. All of the hematite colors have been on my list for a long time, but they're, they're pretty expensive as well. The, a lot of the genuine colors are pretty expensive. Um, so I also got an Escada Versatile brush uh, in a size 8. I'm going to go ahead and take this little plastic part off and throw it away. Um, kind of get that glue off of the brush and then show it to you, but it's a very good, these are really, really good quality synthetic brushes, and I'm really excited to use that. The only other one I have, because they're quite expensive as well, um, not really on the scale of paint brushes, but uh, yeah, they're still too expensive for me to, to buy a bunch of them, but I, I have a number 12, and I accidentally got it in the long size rather than the short one, so it's kind of weird painting with this one. So I wanted to get a short handle one and then a smaller size as well. Um, but I still use this one and the the link doesn't really bother me that much because I use it for doing more loose stuff. So it kind of helps out with uh, me being loose. But anyway, so I got this paintbrush which I'm really, really excited about. And then I got, oh my gosh, I'm so excited about this right here. So I got the, I don't know if it's Fine Tech or Finitech pearlescent colors. Um, this box is gorgeous. It used to be sold in just like a plastic box um, that wasn't very pretty. But they, I guess they had got a new manufacturer. If you want to hear about all the information, check out Kay Warner Design. She kind of explains um, like the history of Finitech or fin, Finitech, Fine Tech. I don't know how to say it. Um, but the new way that they're doing it is awesome because you get a metal palette um, with wells and stuff to go in it. And I got the 12 set that has um, like the the silver and the golds, but also a lot of the different colors. Um, and I, I mean, I would love to have also the palette with all the golds and stuff, but I figured two golds and a silver is good enough. And then you have like a coppery color and then all these other colors. And I figured they would look really good in loose watercolor paintings with like that, just that pop of that shimmer. Um, so yeah, that's why I got the 12 color set because I wanted the multiple colors, not just gold and silver. And I don't really do much with duochrome, so that's why I didn't do get the duochrome colors. I don't really paint on black very much. Um, but yeah, these are gorgeous colors and I cannot wait to use them. 
So I will probably do a video where I swatch these out for you. Um, so you can see what the colors look like. I'll swatch them out on white and black paper. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited. Okay. So that was the last thing I got from um, the sale of my Cricut. And so now we're going to move on to like actual Christmas presents. Um, so yeah. Alright, so some more stuff I got for Christmas. Another Blick box. Um, and inside, I'll go ahead and just take everything out. Take all the little mini boxes out so this big box won't be in the way. So I got some more watercolors for M. Graham. I wanted to get like a full set, like a lot of M. Graham colors to try them out and see which ones I like so I can set up like a full M. Graham palette. Pretty sure I mentioned that already. But I got Terra Rosa, which is kind of like Indian um, red or Venetian red. It's an opaque PR 101 color. Cobalt Green, um, which I tried the, the Cobalt Green Light from Daniel Smith. And I figured, um, since I love that one so much, if I got the Cobalt Green from Daniel Smith, I meant from M. Graham, then I can just water it down and have the Cobalt Green Light and have the intense deep Cobalt Green. So that's the reason I got that. And I love granulating colors, so... Anything that granulates, I am a super fan of. And I got Prussian Blue, Naphthol Red, and Sepia. Y'all can't see those, so here's Terra Rosa. Here is Cobalt Green, Prussian Blue. Naphthol Red, Sepia, and then I think I got another color possibly in this box. Yes, I got three more colors. And then I got Dioxazine Purple. Always a good color to have on your palette. Burnt Sienna. And Payne's Gray. So that, I think, finished the collection that uh, Steve from the Mind of Water Watercolor suggested. So I have the Payne's Gray, the Sepia, and then in the um, last box I had Neutral Tint. And then here's Prussian Blue. And then I have had Azo Green and um, Quinacridone Red. And I think the other one was Transparent Pyrrol. No. Transparent Red Iron Oxide. So I have all those colors, plus some more that I just wanted to try out. And then the next thing I got were to complete some, or not complete, but to um, fill out some of my brush -o collection. I got four new brush -os. Three of them I got like primary colors so that if I wanted to um, mix kind of my own colors or something or just have a primary color that doesn't burst out into different colors. I got these three colors right here. So I got lemon, which is just a pure yellow pigment. Rose red, which is just a pure red pigment. And then turquoise, which is just the pure blue pigment. And then I also got, just because it looked interesting and in how it separated, um, gray. So I got those to add to my brush show collection, which I'm going to have to put the little pins in them. And then another thing that I got for my M. Graham watercolors, and that's the reason why I got so many M. Graham watercolors. Um, I just chose M. Graham and decided to stick with that and get a full set of those and then in the future get another type of watercolor. What I normally like to do is stick with one brand of watercolor and learn that and use that um, for a while before I get another brand. So I think the next brand that I'll focus on is maybe Schmika, uh, because they are really good paints as well. But this is a studio palette, and it, I got it from Walmart actually, and it was the last one there, and it was on sale for like $20, uh, which is amazing for this palette. It, it's not a porcelain pa palette, it is a plastic palette, but it's set up like the porcelain palettes. And so it has like this little thing right here. 
so that you can lift the lid off, which is something that I definitely need. I really do need a lid to go with my palette because I have cats. And oh my gosh, if I leave a palette open or like I have this open palette right here that my M. Graham paints are in right now, just for trying them out and playing around with them. And oh my goodness, it's ridiculous because the cat hair gets everywhere. And I use saran wrap and everything too, but it still gets in there somehow. But anyway, the lid has two separate mixing areas. And then on the, in the palette itself, it has 32 wells, which I will film a video of me filling in the wells and uh, showing you the order of my paints and the swatch cards of all of the Imgram paints. I look forward to that video in the future. And um, they're giant wells, wells. I don't think I'm going to fill them up completely because I think that 15 milliliters will probably fit <laughs> inside these wells. They're huge. Oh my goodness, like, I think they're an inch by an inch, most of them, and then the ones in the corner, they're longer. So they, they fit a lot of paint. So I want to, whenever I fill it, I probably need to definitely be um, sure of where I want my colors and what colors I want on there. Now this is a 32 palette well. I'm at well palette, and I only have 31 M. Graham colors right now. I didn't order permanent alizarin crimson um, just because I was low on funds, and I figured what I could do is use the um, Rose Matter from uh, Mission Gold because it's the same consistency. It may not be the same brand, but it's the same consistency, and put that in my palette until um, I can order permanent alizarin crimson from Mission from M. Graham uh, because it is kind of like a, um, a permanent alizarin crimson matter lake type color. Um, so that's something I'll probably do. Either that or leave it blank. But I definitely need to figure out like the order of the colors and how I want them to fit in there, etc. But that's pretty exciting. It is plastic, so I'm going to wash it first. But And it probably will stain, but I don't mind the staining so much. I just like the big, the big studio palette with the lid um, because I'll... M. Graham I'll probably just keep in the in the palette in the studio and not really take it traveling with me. Although, you really can. Like I said, they don't really like move around that much because this I have tilted in. If you watch my art room video, I have like a box where I have all my watercolor palettes. And this one stays tilted like this. And they don't move at all. So, yeah. I think I've said that before. But yeah, they don't really... Once they dry, they don't move that much. They're not like liquid, they just re-wet really, really easily. And then that's it from Blick. And so I have some more stuff coming up in just a second. All right, so another place I shopped at online was jetpins.com and I got a few things there, which I have already um, kind of opened them and started writing with them because like I said, I am impatient, but I do still have most of the original packaging. These were just kind of like in a box. Um, but I will say that Jet Pens is amazing. You only have to spend $25 and you get free shipping. There's no tax. And then I ordered it the day after Thanksgiving and got it the Monday after that weekend, which is really, really quick for a holiday season. Season, So that was amazing. But I got two of the um, Uni Style Fit Multi Pens and one's in pink and then the blue, and it's the ones that have the eraser at the end, and sadly, I thought I added the pencil component to um, add to my little clip here, because how cool is it to have a pencil and not have to carry around, you know, um, an extra pencil in your pencil case, because you know we all know that we want to carry tons and tons of stuff in our pencil case, but we don't have room for it. Um, but these, are, these have five spaces so that you can put um, your different pens in it, and I got the 20, no, the 16 set, um, of the refills for the multi pen just to try out all the colors um, and I've been using the yellow and um, orange mostly because I really don't write that much with those I've actually used up all the orange one um, I don't know which orange one yeah this orange one right here I've actually used it all up and I'll show you what I've used that all up in um, let me open this for you but it came in this Ziploc bag with all of these different um, pen colors in it and it comes with 16, but I only got two pens, so I had to pick the colors 
that I wanted to put in there. Um, and I'm going to have to replace this one, which is, I think, yellow right now that I'm starting to use up. Just because, like I said, I don't write with it a lot. So I'm playing around with the pens and testing them and seeing how they write with the colors that I don't like so much. So that when I start using them, like, in my um, planner or anything like that, then I'm using the colors that I like. Uh, to write with. I don't like to write with orange and yellow just because I am really, really blind and I, I cannot see it. It's really hard to read. Um, but yeah, it comes with 16 colors and they're beautiful. I love them. Oh my gosh, these are they're in the size 0 0.38 and they're so tiny and I love writing with really tiny pens. Um, you can write really small and have that fine line. It's just, it's awesome. And then to have it in a multi-pen is really cool. So I got that and then I also got this beautiful little pen holder it is a um, I don't know what it's called exactly but it has that multiple where you can put different sizes it has the four metal tongs in there where you can put different size nibs in there so that all of the size nibs fit and this is only a dollar seventy something but it's a really pretty like marbled um, nib holder and I got a straight nib holder even though I'm trying to learn copper plate because I found some nibs which I'll show you later that help with copper plate um, and uh, you can use a straight pen instead of an oblique pen holder and then I also already have um, kind of like the cheapo oblique nib holder so I was going to just see how I like this one compared to this one and those other nibs and uh, just kind of figure out if I want an oblique pen holder for later this is just more um, I guess universal like I can use it with um, the other thing that I or the last thing that I got which are the Nico um, G model nibs to go into the um, pen holder and these you can use for calligraphy as well as for drawing so a straight pen is better for drawing and then the oblique pen is better for um, copper plate calligraphy so that's why I got a straight pen so it'll be more universal and I'll show you the other nibs I got later um, so that is what I got from Jet Pens. I hope you can see this. Let me zoom in a little bit. But these pens are really, really cool. You can, um, it has the metal clip that clips onto things. And you, I usually would put my pencil there if I would have remembered to order the case. I think I accidentally forgot to add it back to my cart. Uh, but then you just click down. <clears throat> and each time you click, you get a different color, which is really cool. And I have it divided into, like, the darker colors and here and then the lighter colors like the yellow reds um, like the bright colors that you um, wouldn't use to write normal stuff but you could write it and use it in your planner and everything and then um, like the blue black and, and brown black and black and stuff like that and this one right here now I feel like I'm too close I'm having trouble here Let's zoom out a little bit alright so that is my haul from Jet Pens Ooh, throwing it around now and then another thing um, that I got was actually from Target, which um, just kind of goes with the Jet Pens haul, um, is a traveler's journal. And it's, it's a faux leather traveler's journal, but it's really pretty. It's got the pink, um, the pink strap that goes around it. And then when you open it up, um, you get, um, it comes with like a monthly um, planner and a weekly planner so you get like let's see for the month you get this little spread which is really cool and it has like January make a plan it has your goals your celebrations your events don't forget miscellaneous and then you open up to the monthly spread and it has notes and then like future and past planning and then you get a week on a page or on two pages but it also has like a to-do list for the week call email errands notes stuff like that um, this is really cool, and uh, I kind of want, I want to use these books, but I did also purchase um, from Amazon some other books to go into the Traveler's Journal, so I don't know if I'm going to use these not or not. I don't think I am. I may give them to my son. I did do some pen testing, and or no, a list, a note in the back, um, but yeah, oh, and it has notes and stuff in the back. Um, but if you were buying this as your first, like, traveler journal or anything, then these would be really great. Like, ch they change them each year. And, um, <clears throat> like, the way it's planned out is pretty cool. But I just like drawing mine out and having space to do little designs and stuff like that. And just having it the way, exactly the way I want it. So I probably won't use these. I'll probably give these, these to my son so that he can play around and maybe start learning to plan stuff. Um, but, yeah, I got this little thing. And it has a pen holder right here, a little... Um, pocket right here and then a station is it called a stationary pocket I'm not sure right here 
and then another little pocket right here which is pretty cool you can add like washi tape or whatever you want inside of there and this was only $19 or $20 from um, Target which is pretty cool um, and it's my first traveler's journal I usually work in let's see I have it right here this bullet journal right here um, it's the Leuchtstrom 1917 bullet journal and it's pretty much done um, so I'm starting in this one and I already have some notebooks started um, planning out for 2018 and if you would like to see me flip through like my traveler's notebook setup just let me know and I will definitely do that uh, so yeah I got this and then um, to go along with that from Amazon I ordered a lot of stuff from Amazon and got a lot of stuff sent to me from Amazon but the moleskin Kahir um, notebooks fit perfectly into this planner which is really cool and these were at Target as well um, our one set was at Target I got the um, blank ones at Target but if you open to the center and go oh and this has four bands just like regular travel planner tra travelers notebooks let me zoom back out a little bit but these fit perfectly in here so I figured what I would do is use the, the moleskin to here um, travels travelers notebook so I got two sets one in the blank pages and then one set of the dotted pages so that I can do all my plan or the grid pages um, they didn't have the dotted pages at uh, where I was or online for some reason I couldn't find them on Amazon I'm sure I could have found them somewhere else if they exist but I didn't really look for them I just got the grid ones um, but yeah, I figured I'd start out in my traveler's notebook using these notebooks and if I really like it, then I have some plans for in the future and maybe possibly getting a real traveler's notebook, um, or like a faux leather traveler's notebook, but like a fancy one or something like that. Something, um, that is made more the way I want it to because I also kind of want it to work as my wallet. Like, I know you can buy pockets to go in there for wallets, but I want like this part to be my wallet and use the pockets for like washi tape or stickers or something like that. But yeah, so I got those here journals. And then also from Amazon, or actually before I get to all the Amazon stuff, because I think that's all I have left is a bunch of stuff from Amazon. Um, Miss Joanne Anthony sent me some things and I wanted to show you them. So she sent me this journal that she made, um, which is really cool. It's leather on the outside, and she did some sewing design on the inside. And then she sent me, oh, I'll come back to this, but it has 90-pound paper and then 140-pound paper and then 300-pound paper in it, which is really cool. And she wanted me to let you know that if you wanted a journal made for you, then to um, hit her up, and I will leave... I guess her email address in the link down below so that y'all can see it. But uh, it's really cool that you have all those different weights of paper in the journal. That's really hard to do, or at least for me. Um, especially folding the 300 pound paper and everything. Um, and then she also sent me samples of the Radiance watercolors. And then one of the dyes that she makes on her own, which she calls eggplant, I think. And um, Sadly, this was actually all that was left because the way they were sent, um, it's really hard to send liquid watercolors, um, but the way they were sent, this one sadly, like, I'll show you actually. She sent them in this little cup, like this right here, but they were in these pipettes, so I have a ton of these pipettes now, so I guess she also sent me a bunch of pipettes. Um, and then she put, she put glue at the end of the pipette so that it wouldn't leak, but one of them did, and it was her, her eggplant one. This is just the black of the Radiance. I haven't put it in a storage container because I ran out and I don't use black that much. Um, so I'm just saving it in here for until I get a container. But all the other colors, what I did is I went ahead and put them in these little baby jars. I knew I was saving them for something. But she sent me a lot. Like, look at that. That's a lot of color there. Especially as concentrated as these are, the Radiant watercolors from PH, Dr. P.H. Martins. So that was really nice of her. And... Oh my gosh, these are gorgeous colors. Like, they're so bright and vivid. I don't, they, they don't really act like watercolors to me, so they're probably not really my favorite medium. I do like the Dr. Page Martins a little bit better, but they're so fun to play with and just like doodle and do little crazy things with them. And the colors are so, so beautiful, but you can still mix them down to get like toned down colors and everything too. And then she also sent me 
um, some watercolor brushes. And I, I do believe these are the watercolor brushes that you can get from Daiso. Um, cause that's what we were talking about in our emails, but these are amazing brushes. Oh my gosh. Like I really, really, really love these brushes. They, they keep their point. This one probably needs to be wet. Um, but they keep their point really, really well. And, or at least the two that I've tried. Um, but you can get really fine detail with them and just make really cool like designs and stuff in watercolor. They do stain because they are white Taclon, but, um, and you can see the staining happening right there compared to what they start out looking with. Especially, I guess, if you're using <laughs> dyes like I was using with the Radiance watercolors. Um, but yeah, the, these are really amazing brushes. And if these are a dollar at Daiso or two dollars or however much Daiso charges, I've never been there. Um, but that's really inexpensive for some pretty good quality brushes. And I want to get the pack. I've seen people on YouTube get the pack with the bigger brushes. I want to try those out too, just to see if they work as well as these. Because these are just amazing and I love them. So, shout out to Miss Joanne. Thank you very much. And Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. And or I hope you enjoyed your Christmas and your holidays. Um, and then, for, okay, from Amazon... I got this pencil case right here to go along with my traveler's notebook whenever I go out and travel. And uh, I just, it's such a cool pencil case. I think I've seen people on YouTube, I think Boho Berry has like the teal one or something similar to this, but I couldn't find the teal one. This turned out to be green, but it's still pretty. Um, and it has like the zipper right here where you can put little small things in there if you want to. And a little pocket right here. Um, and then here's my little pens from Jet Pens that are not in the little pouch. But I'm going to put them in there. Uh, so I have my most used pens here and then a bunch of different things in here. Glue sticks, you know, water brushes, um, pens, gel pens, stuff like that for right now. That's all I have in there right now. And with all that stuff, like, that's a lot of stuff. I don't even have my Tombow markers in it yet, but that's a lot of stuff. And um, you can still close it up and probably still fit some more stuff in there. So that's a really cool um, pencil case. So I got that. And then my son actually got these for me, which is, oh, he did amazing, I have to say. So for $7, he got me these stencils that go into um, your, um, you can use them in your traveler's notebook or your planner, but they have like all these different, I don't know if you can see them, but all these different cool little shapes and stuff. So you can put designs really easily, like flags and stuff like that, arrows, in your bullet journal or your planner or whatever. And there's 20 of them. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot. And they're numbered so that you can tell which side, which side is the front. But there's so many of them. And they have numbers and banners and all kinds of cool stuff. Um, so, And look at these little... Okay, got to figure out how to show you this. These little banners right here, that's really cool. So you can get like shadowy effects for your banners. Um, a little house. There's just so many cool little designs on there. Little bubble um, words, and, or not words, but bubbles where you can put sayings in. Just so many cool things. Clouds, arrows again, little bullet dots that are actually banners. So you can use bullets for squares, um, angle triangles. Um, just so many cool things. Like, it's amazing. I really, really loved it. So he did a great, great job. He also got me a pair of scissors um, because, oh my gosh, I lost my scissors. Oh, there they are. He, um, he actually lost my good scissors that they were used to cut everything pretty much. They were my Tim Holtz scissors. And uh, he couldn't find those, but he did get me these pretty like flower um, sewing shears, I think is what they are, but they cut through like everything. They're amazing. Um, so yeah, he got me some scissors. All right, and then let's see what else. I also got a set of three Signo Uniball gel or Uniball Signo Signo Broad gel pens for making white highlights. Um, these are some of the the best pigment gel pens out there for for um, white highlights and stuff like that. I do use the the um, you need Posca acrylic pens, but if you don't want acrylic, these are really cool as well. So I got these, which will eventually go into my pencil case, or at least one of them will. And then I'm trying to go in order of re re relevance. Let me speak English. All right, so then I also got a bunch of little washi tapes. 
So I have opened one of them. This one right here. Um, so I got this set right here. I think it was like, let's see. Okay, 40 of the skinny washi tapes, and it wasn't very expensive. I think it was like $9. And then I got this one, which is decorate, decorative washi tape, and I have not opened it yet. And I think they're all separate, so they're all going to fall out when I do open it. Oh, they're not all separate. That's good. These are like super, super skinny washi tapes. Like, I didn't notice, and if you can tell, like far away, they look like here's a roll, here's a roll, or something like that. And that's what I saw on Amazon. But uh, when you get up close, you can tell that it's they're very, very skinny little bitty things of washi tape. Um, but they're all really pretty, and they have, like, um, gold foil and stuff on them, so I'm sure they will get used for, like, decorative purposes. And then it came with this little anime-looking washi tape, which is really, really cool. Um, so it has, like, a little anime story on the thing. So that's really cool. So I got those washi tapes. And then to go along, this is all stuff that I got to go along with my traveler's notebook and doing like a journal and stuff in there. Um, because I do want to start doing that. I love doing the bullet journal and I'm still going to stick to the bullet journal stuff. But I'm also going to add in other notebooks and stuff uh, so that I can add like a journal and then like also a watercolor um, kind of book and everything. So then I also got, let me just bring up more things then than one. Then I also got this corner EK Tools um, corner rounder, mini corner rounders, yeah. Um, and it comes in diff two different sizes. Um, I didn't know this, but someone had also got me this corner um, punch. Uh, I don't know if I like it because it doesn't actually round the corners. It kind of leaves them a little square. This is the Fiskars one. This is the EK Tools one, so we'll see which one I like better. Um, but I like uh, rounding the pages because the key the Kahir notebooks, the pages are rounded, um, and a lot of notebooks that go into Traveler notebooks, the pages are rounded, so I figured if I made, made my own that I would need to round the corners, so I got that, that, and then I also got this from uh, someone who sent me a Christmas present, and then because I do want to do watercolors in my Traveler notebook, um, I got the Peerless Bonus Pack. Just because it was cheaper to get the small set of the Peerless bonus pack than the big set. And then it was also cheaper to get the small set of the bonus pack than just the set of 12 of the big set. So I figured tr just trying them for the first time, I would just get the, the small 2x2 two two Peerless transparent watercolor bonus pack. And as you can see, I've already cut a little square off of all of them and made a little booklet for my traveler's notebook. Um, I actually made a dashboard and a booklet that goes together. I will show you that in another video if you want to see that as well. Um, and these are really cool so that I can paint, keep that little booklet in my traveler's notebook and paint with these on the go and not have to bring any kind of like watercolor palette or anything whenever I go. And since it's in my traveler's notebook and I'm just doodling or sketching whenever I'm out with my kids or in the park or something like that, then um, I don't have to worry about a palette. I just bring my water brush and the Peerless watercolors and I can play around. So that's really cool. This was like the coolest gift I got so far, I think. <laughs> um, and then I got the Spencerian Penmanship booklet, all um, six of them. I got the, uh, what's it called? The Theory book, um, which turns out you don't actually have to buy the theory book. It, they, you get two choices on Amazon. You can get the set with the theory or you can buy, or three choices, or you can buy the five um, or you can buy each one separately. And you don't need the theory one. You can actually download that for free online. I did not know that when I purchased it, but it it's only like a dollar more to get it with this book. So, um, But yeah, this is what I've been using my pen in. And you, you can see all the yellow and the orange. Maybe you can't see that. Let's see. There's yellow. See, this is why I don't use yellow and orange. It doesn't show up very well. And this is orange, me practicing. Um, but So I'm almost done with book one. And then I have like these two rows in book two done as well. So I've been working on that. So I got this for um, learning to write and use in my traveler's notebook or my bullet journal or whatever I'm going to be using. Just learn to write really pretty and neat. Um, it's going to take a while, I'm pretty sure, to get through all five books, but eventually I will know how to write pretty 
And um, yeah, I really enjoy working in these books because it's very, very cathartic and um, you're writing in it and your mind is just taken to, I guess, nowhere. So you're just calm and, and free. So it's actually really fun to do. I really enjoy it. It's not like work or anything. Um, so yeah. Uh, and then to go along with that, and the other calligraphy stuff I got, these are some William Mitchell LTD copper plate nibs. Now these nibs are already, they already have the oblique. They're oblique nibs. And this is the only brand that I could find that, that sells oblique nibs. And I didn't search very hard, but it's the only one that I could find on Amazon or even on like jet pens and stuff like that. Um, but that is really cool. So you can take the um, nib holder, that's a straight nib holder and learn how to use it <laughs> and stick it in there and then you have your oblique pen so you can write at the 52, 53 degree angle that you're supposed to write with. So this was a box of 12 and it was only $13 which is not bad at all um, so that's pretty cool. And then I got two books. I got Making Handmade Books. If you have been subscribed and watched a lot of my videos, you know that there, at some point I tried to make like this mini, maybe this size, um, size handmade watercolor journal. And I was horrible at it. I nicked myself with a sewing needle and bled all over the watercolor paper. And just, I had a lot of trouble. And I see all these people on YouTube making, you know, all these gorgeous books. And I'm like, I want to do that. And I also just want to know how to make my own handmade watercolor journals because this comes in really handy because you can buy the huge sheets of paper which are really inexpensive compared to buying a bunch of watercolor journals that other companies make. It's cheaper to buy the, the big sheets and make them yourself. It may be a little bit more work but it, it's definitely easier on the pocket. So I figured I would get this book and learn how to make some, um, some of my own books and stuff and especially for like the traveler's notebook and stuff like that I wanted to learn how to make some little inserts and stuff for that. Um, so yeah, I've only read through this right here, um, but so far it's really confusing because <laughs> apparently you have to like cut against the grain and then fold with the grain, and so I'm trying to figure that out. Um, so yeah, I got this book right here, and then I got the 30th Anniversary Edition of Exploring Color Workshop with new exercises, lessons, and demonstrations, and it's just really cool because it shows you how how color goes together and it's very inspirational um, like this this is a very bright and vivid painting but it's gorgeous and the colors really go well together because there's purple and yellow and then blue and orange so it uses color, color oh that's what it was called double complementary tetratic alright so it just teaches you more about color theory and then using different um, palettes it has traditional palettes and palettes that have been used in the past and it's just a really interesting and really cool book and if you want to learn about color theory and it even covers like iridescent colors um, so if you want to learn about color theory and stuff like that for any medium um, this is a really good book for that <clears throat> so those are the two books I got I'm running out of spaces to put things some of this stuff was still you know left in the Amazon box because I haven't touched it yet <laughs> so it's all on the side of my desks now sides of my desk I speak English every day. All right, so to go along with the how to make books um, thing, I got a book binding kit that comes with some needles, and I already have some of the little hooked needles. Um, and it has just a bunch of stuff in there for making books. It has the wax twine and ruler and some um, clips and a bone folder and some little pocket scissors and um, what is this called? Um, the Japanese something. But it's a little thing that you use to like poke holes in the paper. So a lot of cool stuff that you tend to need whenever you are um, doing book binding. And actually reading through the book binding book, I have pretty much everything I need in this little kit right here, which is awesome. Except for glue. Um, then I got this right here, which is the Essential Math Geometry geometry set by Mr. Penn and it was really really inexpensive but the um, dividers and the compass and stuff they're all metal which I thought was really, really cool I'm probably gonna throw away these little pencils right here and use my own pencils but it also comes with 
a lot of stuff. So a metal study compass, a metal graphic compass, extra lead for compass, metal divider, two pencils for the compass, a 0.5 millimeter mechanical pencil, five millimeter lead for mechanical pencil, an eraser, a metal pencil sharpener, a six inch ruler, um, a set, two different set squares, a protractor, and a six inch protractor with swing arm and a lot of that stuff you do need for make for book binding and stuff like that and then, all right so the next thing i got to go with the book binding and the calligraphy stuff is some of this tomo river paper or tomoe river paper um i got the loose a4 sheets with 100 sheets this is really really thin paper if you can see that let me zoom out um it's really really thin paper but it's amazing paper um, it works really, really well, and so it's great. The fact that it's thin is amazing for traveler's um, notebooks. So you can have a lot of sheets of paper and um, it not be really thick and not take up a lot of space. But it also, it takes watercolor really well. Um, it still wrinkles and everything, but it just holds the watercolor really well. And then um, it for uh, calligraphy pens or gel pens or anything like that, it's just a wonderful paper for writing on. So I got it so that if I like the the traveler's journal setup, when I if I do get a new traveler's journal, or even if I stick to the one that I have now, um, that I will use this to make my own inserts instead of buying new Kahir inserts. Um, I'll just maybe print out like dot grids for the ones that I want dot and leave it blank for the ones that I want blank and use the book binding book to make some traveler's or YouTube um, to make some traveler's journal inserts. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then if I had figure out a setup that I absolutely love, I could also print those inserts on here, if, like if I make them on Excel or Word. So that's why I got that paper. And then I also got uh, this Fabriano Studio uh, watercolor paper. I got the Hot Press. It comes in 20 sheets. This is 90 pounds. Um, but I got this because I do, like I said, want to do watercolor in my traveler's notebook. Um, but... For some reason, the um, the Peerless, I was I was planning on using, I have a big giant roll of the Canton XL Mixed Media paper just because it's overall um, good paper for watercolor, for mixed media, stuff like that. But the Peerless, once you put the, the, the ink down, it dries a little bit too quickly on the mixed media paper, so it's harder to blend the lines out. Um, so I got this Fabriano Studio paper um, because I didn't want to spend too much money on um, artist quality paper uh, for Traveler's Notebook, but I do want to have paper in there that I can watercolor on, um, like actual watercolor paintings. Um, and I got hot press because I am using ink and I do want to do like studies and stuff and try to do a little bit more realistic stuff in my um, in my planner and then also, or in my Traveler's Notebook, and then also pens just t seem to work better on this. And then I got it in 90 pounds so that it won't make my traveler's notebook really, really bulky. Um, the leather ones, some of them, you can get them with like a bigger spine so that you can keep them bulk, uh, bulky if you want the, them to be. Um, but these don't. So, yeah, I just wanted to have enough room to fit. Like, I want to have the peerless thing and then a watercolor notebook and then my art journal slash journal and then like a collections for the bullet journal style system and then like my monthly and weeklies and then a dailies one. So I want to have room in here to fit everything. So yeah, and this is, um, to me, one of the best student quality papers just because it does have that 25% cotton. Um, so it takes a little bit more than the other student quality papers. And then for calligraphy, I also got some layout bond. Um, and none of these are really expensive. The Tomoe River paper was, that was expensive. It was $20. Um, but these two I think are only like $10 a piece, which is not bad at all. And this is a lot of paper for writing with calligraphy. Um, I read somewhere that Layout Bond is some of the best paper for calligraphy, um, especially using nibs on. So, um, and this was one of the things that was suggested in one of the calligraphy books that I got. So I figured I'd get this and try it. And it's um, 50 sheets, which is really, really good um, for the price. So, And then I also got... Uh, I guess I'll show this one. Another one of those pencil cases. It's 160. It holds 160 pencils, and all of the four little. It has four little zipper things right here. If you can see that, um, and you can fit all your pencils in it. But what I was planning on doing is actually putting 
Um, I don't know if they'll fit, actually. Yeah, they'll fit. I just have to tweak them a little bit. The um, Zig Clean Color Real Brush is in them because I had them in a drawer. And it, it's harder to find the colors that you're looking for when they're just like slayed in a drawer or in a cup. I like to have them in the in these books. Um, I have my Tombow markers in there. My All my color pencils are... are watercolor pencils in, in one of these and these are just amazing so for I think this one was $17 um, usually they're under $20 you can get like this faux leather pencil case which is really cool and then I also got a kneaded eraser which I just needed to pick up another one because my other one is really dirty and then I've been wanting this for so long it's ridiculous um, I got my masking fluid is so cheap it turns my paper yellow. It's just the Daler Rowney kind that you get from Walmart. And it turns all of my papers yellow. Some of the papers it doesn't actually. Um, but a lot of the paper it does. So I got this um, fine line masking fluid pen with a super fine tip. Um, so yeah, that'll go in handy for making like really tiny highlights for more realistic paintings and stuff like that. So I'm really excited about using this. And then last but not least. I'm so excited about this. I got the set of 72 ink tints blocks, which I'll probably do a video of like first impressions and stuff of these, but so far, I love them. <laughs> I have tried them and swatched them out, and they're gorgeous. There are some weird things about some of them, um, like the opacity. Um, I always thought that all of the ink tints pencils were transparent, but if like this one right here, this one right here, and then the white that comes with it. I've noticed so far are really actually opaque colors. Um, so that's just something new that I didn't know about. Uh, but yeah, they're really, really gorgeous. Oh my god, I just love looking at this, don't y'all? Isn't it pretty? Oh, I'm so excited about them. I plan to use them more like a watercolor um, pans, I guess, um, than like as a stick. Uh, except for if I'm doing like the big paintings and I wet my whole paper, maybe I'll use the stick a little bit to do like loose abstract type paintings. Um, but for actual watercolor paintings or ink paintings, um, I'll probably use them kind of like where you just take the paintbrush and do it like this. Um, but yeah, they're very, very versatile and I'll probably talk more about them in another video. But this is the biggest thing that I got for Christmas other than my m -Gram watercolors and I'm so, so excited about them. Oh, I'm so excited. I love ink tents because the layers underneath stay permanent whenever you're working on top and uh, in glazing and stuff. So you can work continuously and it's just amazing. And I've always, I only have the set of 36 in the pencils and I always wanted to try out the rest of the colors to kind of just see which ones I wanted. And so now I can do that with the blocks. So very, very, very excited about that. All right, so that is it for the haul video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and maybe saw something that you would like to get for yourself in the future. I love, um, I love haul videos. I love people sharing things that they got um, so that I can see like, ooh, I want that, ooh, I want that, and add it to my wish list. It's just something fun to do. And then later on, see how they use it in future videos also is, is a good thing. Um, so I will definitely be doing some things with um, the things I got. Um, some videos on those in the future, like the Derwent Ink Tense pencils uh, or blocks and the um, Radiance watercolors and the uh, the Peerless uh, transparent watercolors, which both of those are inks, by the way. They're not pigmented watercolors. Um, but I will definitely be doing some stuff on that in the future. Um, maybe even bookmaking and uh, how I set up my traveler's notebook. I think next week what I'm going to do is do a video on the Peerless, no, the um, Finitech watercolors that I got which I'm also excited about because they are so useful. They're just, they're gorgeous and you could do so many things with them. So um, Friday when I announce the winner for the giveaway, I'll probably do a video on that or um, maybe something else. I do have a request for uh, doing a pigment highlight video for PY129, um, 129, which is green gold. So I may do that as well. Um, but yeah, like I said, I hope you enjoyed the haul video, and if you have any questions about anything I got or where I got it from, I will have those linked down in the description bar below, or at least the things that I can link down below. 
Um, and yeah, I hope everyone enjoyed their Christmas and their New Year's and got a little vacation out of it and just had fun and enjoyed the season because it's one of my favorite seasons. I love the cold weather and everything. But if you like this haul video and you would like to see future haul videos, please do give me a thumbs up and click that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!